How to clean your indoor air and surfaces tutorial. Particulate matter and particles. They're the same thing. This is chapter three. We will be discussing particles and smoke detectors. Particles particulates all around us. As you can see from this image, particles can come from human shedding, pet shedding, outdoor air, soil, indoor mold growth. And as you can also see, particles from outdoors can come indoors, and particles that originate indoors can go right back outside. Particles with an air monitor. So here we have someone cooking, and we have a HEPA purifier, or we can use a high density negative ionizer. Both of them remove particles. Again, for any air pollutant, we use our air monitors to monitor the air so we know what's going on. When you're cooking, particles in the air skyrocket. Your air monitor will show this. The particles can be captured by the HEPA filter or knocked to the floor by a negative ionizer. Afterward, your particle monitor will show particles went straight down. Indoor air particulates. So we use our air monitor to monitor these sorts of particulates in the air. And it tells us how many particles we have in the air and whether or not we should use more devices to clean the air. The health effects of air pollution. As you can see from the first image, air pollution affects every single cell in our body. We might have trouble sleeping because of air pollution. We might have stomach issues because of air pollution. The second image you can see, depending on the particle size, changes where it could land inside of our bodies. So the smallest particles are actually capable of going deep into our lungs and right into the bloodstream. Additional health effects. As you can see from the first image, Air pollution causes oxidative stress. I think that's the simplest way to say it. The second image, again, air pollution affects every part of our body. I suggest further reading online and you can see this. Like sometimes people have trouble having children and they might not realize it's the air pollution in their own homes. Inhaled exhaled particles. Not only do we inhale particles, we also exhale particles like virons when we are sick. Again, I wanted to show another photo of particulate inhalation. Larger particles tend to land in the upper respiratory tract. The smaller particles can end up in our bloodstream. So it's very important to understand this. Any particle can end up anywhere, but generally this is a pattern that's followed. Cell cap junctions. This is extremely important. Air pollution over time can easily destroy our cell gap junctions. What this means is that our cells are no longer tightly packed and air pollutants can go right in between the cells. And for example, as you can see in the animated GIF, when you're inhaling a particle, it can actually go straight to the brain. So this is really, really important. And this is why we need to make sure we have clean air at all times, whether it's at home, driving, or at work. I also wanted to notate that as a form of alternative medicine, negative ions do help with cell gap junctions and ensure that these cells are tightly packed together. Inhaled particulates. We inhale 100,000 microorganisms a day, every single day. We also inhale hundreds of billions of particles every single day. When we inhale these particles, the cecilia in a rapid wave-like motion brushes these particles right back up the lungs to be cleared out of the lungs. As you can see from the one grain of rice, three weeks of particulate matter is very, very, very small. So when we, when we inhale these particles, the cilia brushes it right back up as you can see in the second image, and it takes between three and 24 hours for the particulates to go right into our stomach. 90% of the particles we inhale, like dust, we actually end up swallowing it. 10% we end up exhaling it out. When we swallow it in our stomach, microbes can't survive there. So this is our stomachs are designed for this. Still, we would like to minimize the amount of particles we inhale because we don't want to inhale that much air pollution into our stomachs. Indoor air particulates. In the first image, those are mold spores growing right on the HEPA filter. The reason why I put this image here is because we shouldn't just think of air particles being in the air. They're on surfaces. They can re airalize at any moment in time. Like in our HEPA filters, they can grow mold and release mold right back into the air. In the second image, you can see different types of particles. You can see soot is not just an even circle and every particle is different from another. So these things are not the same. Outdoor and other air particles. 
a lot of people are not fully aware that there is a lot of mold outside. So in the first image, you can see the average mold concentrations outside. So just because you open your window for fresh air does not necessarily mean you're getting fresh air. Mold is always coming in and out of our homes. The second image shows the particulate matter and what it comprises of across the country. So you can see particles are not the same everywhere. It depends on where you live. In the third image, you can see we have fungi and bacteria inside of our refrigerators. Yes, our refrigerators change our air quality in our home. This is why I recommend ionizers inside the fridge itself. In the last image, you can see the amount of bacteria in the air inside of a school hall or library. Like there's always bacteria in the air. It doesn't matter where you are. So again, particles come from cooking, cleaning, human activities, open windows. We use a portable HEPA purifier or high density negative ionizer when particles are high, or we can use our HVAC system itself. The HVAC itself is an air purifier. You can just turn it on to clean the air particles in your home. Particles resuspended. One report said that an average home produces 40 pounds of dust a year. Most of that dust lands on the floor, not in your HEPA filter. When a baby crawls along a floor, it's inhaling all that dust. It becomes re aerolized So if you have an infant in your home, it's very important to vacuum daily to ensure the baby does not inhale as much dust. Particles resuspended. So as this person walks across the floor, the particles on the floor become re aerolized This is very important to understand conceptually. A smoke detector is actually a crude air monitor for particles. When the particles are incredibly high, the smoke detector will go off. So this is how your air smoke detector works. It's just a very, very low quality air monitor, but it's very reliable. High particle situations. So when you're cleaning or cooking, maybe it's high pollen season outside. These are the types of situations that will give you high particles. And your air monitor would show this, and you can try to deduce how to proceed. Be sure to check out the other videos for the how to clean your air and surfaces tutorial.